Welcome to another board game review from theplayersaid.com. Uh, my name's Alexander and today uh, we're taking a look at the new Lord of the Rings game from Games Workshop actually. Um, this is called Quest to Mount Doom and this is a board game. Uh, Games Workshop not necessarily traditionally known for their board games. Um, they've had a few out there, things like uh, Space Hulk and Blood Bowl that have been around for a long time. But you now those are kind of a, you know, D different styles of games. This is a traditional board game. Like I would play this with my family. It's that kind of a game. Um, moving everyone controls a little piece on the board, moving it around, rolling dice, trying to find the ring, trying to get it to Mount Doom. That's really what it is. Now, a lot of the Lord of the Rings games um, are cooperative, or at least semi-so, where you work in as a fellowship. Everyone's trying to reach the same goal of getting the ring to Mordor um, as the free peoples. This game is not the case. Uh, this game, just breaking from theme, this game is a, just a fun, light-hearted game. Um, I try to win. I want to be the one who has the ring, and I'm going to drop it into Mount Doom. I will win. No one else is going to win, I'm going to win. So, there's, this game has a lot of kind of a backstabbing and a bit of take that going on. Um, what you kind of see, and we'll show you here in a bit, there's all these kind of cards that line the edge of the board, and those are items. One of those items is the One Ring. And they're all face down and hidden, and they all correspond in their positions to a location on the board. So typically what you're doing is you've got your little really cool miniature, and these are um, kind of press-fit miniatures that are um, in the size and scale of Games Workshops. Middle Earth strategy battles game. That's it. So this is a teaser for that. Yeah, great little minis. If you wanted to paint them up, you could do that. Um, but basically, you 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 kind of you flip a card, so to speak. The Eye of Sauron's going to move through the board. Very bad. If it lands on you, you're going to lose cards. You have to go back to Hobbiton or end up in Rivendell. So it might set you back, so to speak. Uh, but then you're rolling a dice to move from point to point. Um, you'll get movement points based on the dice that you roll. So it is, it is a little bit roll and move, uh, but I don't think that's a bad thing in this particular instance, because it's not like, move that number of squares. Um, each of these pathways has like a numerical value, and you're, you're basically trying to expend points. And there's lots of different paths, so you do have choice there. So it's not... It's not Candyland where it's like, roll and move that many squares. It's not quite like that. So, yeah, it, it keeps it lighthearted though. There's only so much that you can do. Uh, but you're moving around. Each location you go to that has a card, you get to draw that card, which is nice. And that card is, these ones are items. So this one's an elven cloak. The elven cloak protects you from other players stealing your cards, which is the thing. <laughs> the shield of Gondor means that when someone tries to steal your cards, they don't get to. You get to steal one of their cards. Very, very nice. Um, oh, these are all theft ones. I swear they're not all stealing. Uh, the Lembus bread, instead of rolling the dice to move, you it's like you roll the six. You, you move six spaces. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, the one ring. Uh -huh. The one ring, you, you, if you draw the one ring as your item, you're trying to keep it secret. So you've got this hand of cards. I have the one ring. Because as soon as everyone knows I've got it, uh, they're all going to just like hunt me down and jump on me and do this whole, when you move into a space, you can steal a card from someone. Now, so everyone's going to come and try and steal the one ring from me. So there's some good theme there. It's pretty, pretty fun how everyone's just squabbling over it and then trying to beeline it to Mount Doom. So what you end up with a lot of the time is this squabble. Everyone's like in Mordor on, on the banks of Mount Doom just like, clawing at each other, trying to steal back and forth, bringing out all their weapons and shields, just like trying to fight over it, and someone's gonna like claw their way out of the dog pile and get into Mountain Dew and win the game. So this, it's pretty fun that way. Now, I've played this game now a couple times with different play accounts, and I have had a good time each time. And that's, that's what this is. It's not necessarily the most serious and deep, dark, crunchy, thematic Lord of the Rings game. It has good theme, it looks great, but it is fun. I spend 45 minutes just like laughing at how funny it is when, you know, the odds of this landing on you is actually pretty slim, but it landed on one of our players like three times in one game. And they were just like, what do I have to do? Um, is there's cards that protect you from the Eye of Sauron, but he didn't ever have any of those. 
Uh, or then, like, you, you know, you have this master plan, all these great cards to, like, steal from someone. So you go in there, you try to steal from them with all these cards, and uh, but they have a card that's like, I steal from you instead. So there's this back and forth of what happens. You can halt people's movement. You can just, you know, a card says, move any player to Isengard. So you're all the way over in, um, the, at the Black Gate, ready to go into Mordor, and someone's like, just kidding. The Urukai had taken the hobbits to Isengard, and they take you over to Isengard, and you're like, Gah. So now you've got to charge across the board and try and stop the player who's got the ring again. So there's, there's really great fun to be had in this. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the board, and then I'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the kind of board and, and what it all might look like when you've got it half, this is halfway, well, halfway through a game, or towards the end of the game at least. So as you can see, big board. Each of the different kind of areas is represented, and it's all a point-to-point -point movement. And if you look, the, everything's joined up by these dotted paths, and on the path it has a numbered numerical value here. So this is a two, this is a one, three, some fours over here. And, and th this is the kind of the part of the roll and move that I talked about. You roll the dice, and you have five movement points. So, you know, here, if you're in Gorgoroth, you can go two, Three, four, five. But, you know, if you're over here in Hobbiton, you can go one, two, three, four, five. So you can move through, you know, more spaces and easier terrain. If you look, actually getting up Mount Doom, you have to roll at least a four. So it's really hard. You have to roll a six if you're in Sith, Ungul, or the Black Gate to kind of blitzkrieg through to get to Mount Doom. So it's possible, but it's very lucky, you know, that there is that aspect to it as well. And what that does is it kind of clogs up down here, so it's really hard to make that last push if you're the ring bearer. Um, so it's everyone's trying to rush in and kind of gang you and, and take uh, take the ring from you. But, but you know, you all start off in Hobbiton or Rivendell, depending on how many players you've got, and you have these cards. Um, there's everyone starts off with a with a couple of event cards in your hand, and these you know break the rules, so it stops other people's movement or everyone in Mordor misses a turn, or you can move the Sauron counter in, you know, along a pathway, or you can block a card that's played on you. Things, you know, these are just, a lot of it's kind of take that stuff. Sometimes you draw an event and it's like, oh, you get hosed, you know, you lose a turn, your turn ends immediately as well. So, you know, sometimes it's bad stuff happens to you. But basically the game is accruing these hands of cards, moving to areas. So every time you move into an area, like we said, um, I'm going to move into Isengard. I consult around the edge of the board. This is Isengard here. This card has already been taken. But if I had moved into the Gap of Rohan, if my guy ends up here, I can take the Gap of Rohan card. This now gets added to my hand. So the game doesn't start with someone as the ring bearer. You have to find it. So in this instance, um, if someone was to move into Maria, this is where the one ring is. Yeah. And now you have this in your hand. It's a secret. Looks like all the other cards. And whilst there is a little ring miniature here, you don't take that. Um, unless you wanted to some reveal yourself as the ring bearer. Or if it was kind of a, a mnemonic as everyone knew that you had it, you'd give it to them as a reminder. Um, this has its own little special abilities where you can, you know, you can protect yourself. But as soon as you do that, everyone knows you're the ring bearer. So it's kind of a one-time deal. And after that, you'll end up using this a lot to just defend, fend, 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 fend. Um, because what happens is as soon as someone sniffs out the ring bearer or it gets revealed, everyone's going to converge on you, try to take it. Because like I said, it's whoever has the ring and gets to Mount Doom first wins. And that's, there's a little bit of a disconnect, so to speak, in, those, in the theme there where everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Yeah, there's a little bit of theme because... You know, the power corrupts and the fellowship broke up and everyone had their own individual kind of ideas of what should happen. But really, this game is very, very take that in that way. So check your feelings at the door. Uh, but the, it's a very light game. Your, your turn literally consists of flipping over a card. I have Sauron moves to wherever it says, Prancing Pony. If someone was at the pro Prancing Pony, they discard a card and go back to Hobbiton. Then you roll the dice. Like I said, you move that many kind of areas that you can get through. You can play any cards from your hand that you might want to. Some of them help you to move places. Some of them do other bits and pieces to other players. And then at the end of your turn, you just draw an event card. So this goes into your hand. 
That's the last thing that happens. You've got a handle limit of five and that's it. The, the other parts that you'll get into is if one player moves into an area with another player, they can steal a card. So you literally just take a card from their hand and you have that card. So that's one way for, for the one ring to kind of pass between players. That's really mo the, the main way. Um, the other way is if the Eye of Sauron lands on you, you drop the ring, if you're the ring bearer, you go back home to Hobbiton and the ring, uh, this ring card, then goes back to whatever area it's on. It happens to be in Mario, so it's going there. Well, we all know it's in Mario, so everyone's gonna rush to Mario now. So there's a, there's a lot of this really fun game. And like I said, this is a light game. It plays, the first game we played, it was two of us. And the game actually took a bit longer because the one ring was the very last item card that we picked up. So it was kind of crazy that that happened. Um, this, we played again with three players and the ring was found very early, and the game was 45 minutes. It was very, very fun. We spent a lot of time laughing and having a good time, but really that's how, how the game works. There's, there's not a lot to it. You just go around, moving around, a lot of just kind of this, that, and the other. This is a great family type game. Um, so we'll just wrap up some final thoughts here. So uh, that, that was a look at the board and kind of what turns look like and, and the, the physical components of the game. Um, I didn't show you a lot of miniatures, and I probably should have done, because they are, they are fantastic skulls. I think what I'll do is I'll post some pictures online, but these are um, really cool dynamic miniatures, um, you know. We've got Aragorn here, and he's got his two-handed sword up. You can't really see that, I probably should have showed those, I felt bad. Uh, I might showcase those, because these are great. They're little push-fit miniatures, and whilst they're not like Forge World quality, they're much better quality than a lot of the other little pewter miniatures you get inside, like Star Wars Monopoly, things like that. So it's really fun. Um, you do need like a hobby knife or some sprue cutters to cut them from the sprue, but these don't need to be glued together. Um, they have kind of, it's all push fit really tight. So you put it in, it's never gonna come apart. And they got these little slot bases that you just put them on and you know, these are very rarely gonna come off. The only one I had a problem with was the Gandalf miniature. Uh, my one, the little slotter on the miniature is a little bit not formed as well, so it's that one I will have to kind of blue tack or glue into the base itself, but other than that, these are fantastic. And they just, it's cool having little guys moving on a board, having fun, and not every game has to be deep, dark, and serious, and this is not that. It's really fun. Um, it's nice to have Games Workshop branching out from doing Warhammer 40,000 and Age of Sigma, things like that, where it's heavy, really expensive tabletop war games. Now, those have their place and those are very good, and that's what they're trying to get you into. These are kind of like a teaser into those. There was like a, an advert in here for their Battle of Pelennor Fields, which is their brand new box set for the new edition of the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Games. And I'm like, it's expensive, but I desperately want it because it's so nice. There's so much good stuff in it. But it's nice to have a straight board game from them. This is available in America at Barnes & Noble. Get it at your local game store, places like that. I don't, maybe this is an exclusive one at Barnes & Noble. Either way, it's just like a normal board game that people could normally have. It's gonna bring more people into the board gaming, I think, because any, anyone can play this. This is not a complex game in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's just a fun, normal, nice board game. Um, this is what I remember playing as like a kid, those kind of games where it's like, hey, let's just whip out, we play Monopoly or Risk or the Game of Life. And then we'd start getting these kind of games where it was, you know, this is the next level before you start branching out into like super deep heavy Euro games which require a lot of math and thinking and all this stuff. This is just a nice normal game that's fun. Um, I think we, Grant and I play Fantasy Flights, the Lord of the Rings board game from, I mean, that must be nearly a decade old now I think. And that one is co-op, but it's just like, fun if we play a lot of historical heavy war games sometimes we just want to like i go to his house there's an iu basketball game on not for me but you know we've got that on and then we just play like a fun game i have to think about it's just fun and we're enjoying ourselves and there's a result at the end but it's a way to enjoy each other's company and this this does that you know it's a little bit um kind of it's got a lot of take that it's very rude back and forth but 
I've been laughing the whole time doing it because it's just fun and it's silly and it goes back and forth. And that's what's great about it. There, there is some strategy in which cards you're trying to hold on to and save for later or how you go about messing over other players. Um, but there's only so much that you can control in this game. Uh, the, the, the box states that it's two to five players. I played with two. It was fine. Playing with more players is, to me was more fun because it was more chaotic. It's easier to hide who has the ring. And then it's also... It's easier for there to be a lot more player interaction with two of us. I could be over there doing my thing, and you could be over there doing your thing, and we're just searching for the ring, and then you make this big line at the end. Whereas, if you have five players, everyone's like only two squares away, and like, please don't get me, that kind of stuff. And it says you can actually play up to nine players. They're like, for experienced players, an experienced player is someone who's played this game once or twice. Um, if everyone plays, it would be utter chaos. It'd be funny, and I would try it once, uh, but I, d I don't know quite how well that would go over. That might just be too random. But playing with, we played with three, that was great. I would play with four, no problem. Um, even five, I think, would be, would be a fine. You start to get into a little bit of downtime, probably with five, just because it's, I do my thing, you do your thing, you do your thing. And the turns go quickly, but the more players you have, the more time that is between stuff. Um, and, but it's, it was great. I had a great time. I loved how it looks. The artwork is all from uh, the Peter Jackson movies. Uh, and it's done tastefully. You've got these great character cards. So each of the characters you play, so you'll play one of the original Nine Fellowship. Uh, they have a special ability. But they also have on here um, a little picture of a fully painted version of what you're playing with. These nice gold miniatures we've got. It's a fully painted one. Just to wet your whistle if you ever wanted to get into the, the actual strategy tabletop war game that they have. But as board games go, this was a total blast. Uh, I had a great time. So this has been The Lord of the Rings Quest for Mount Doom by Games Workshop. You can pick this up at your local uh, board game stores. Again, this I, it had a sticker on it that said a Barnes & Noble exclusive, but I don't know if that's just for... Obviously, it's probably just for the US, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if you could find it other places. Um, I'd recommend this for having family game nights. This is fun. And just make sure that everyone understands that check your feelings. If don't play with crybabies because this is quite mean at times. But it's all because it's a short game, 45 minutes to an hour at the most. It keeps it lighthearted and you're just kind of messing around. It's not six hours of risk and then you want to like pull your rides out because you just hate each other so much. It's not like that. Um, so I had a great time playing this. Appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Lord of the Rings Quest for Mount Doom uh, from Games Workshop.